This question actually comes from an SAT subject test, Math Level 2, but I think the lessons we can learn from it are applicable to uh, the SAT math and the ACT math as well. So regardless of the test you're taking, I think this is a valuable problem to look at. So what I want you to think about to start is imagine all the math you've learned in your high school career. Let's call that your math universe, right? All the formulas, all the concepts, all the ideas, everything you've learned up to this point. What's tested on the SAT or the ACT or the subject tests in math is actually a smaller, smaller piece of that. So of that grander, bigger universe of all the stuff you've learned, there's a subset of that that's actually tested on these tests. So when you look at a problem like this, this is a, considered to be a harder style geometry question if you see a problem like this on any of the four any of the, the tests. What you want to think about is, okay, given the small universe of topics that are tested on the SAT or the ACT, in particular, in this case about geometry, what tools do I have that could be applicable to a question like this? What formulas, what concepts could be applicable? And use those to begin thinking through your options as to how you can solve this. So what are, in this scenario, thinking of... Um, the subject test in math level two, again, applies to ACT and SAT. What are the possible things they could be testing here? What rules or tools could we use? Well, we've got circles. So we look at the question. We want to find the length of segment AB, which is essentially this. So we don't need to know anything about area or perimeter of the circle. It doesn't seem to be relevant. Uh, we don't, you may have learned stuff about these uh, these angles external to circles in your geometry class, but that's not something tested on any of the tests, so that's not part of our universe. We know that these points A and B are part of these lines which are tangent to the circle, and you might remember that if I connect these radii to those points, it creates right angles. So this is actually a right angle. And this is actually a right angle. Let me step back and just clean up this for a second. So I'm just going to draw these in. So this radius and this radius creates right angles. So that's a fact that might be relevant. What else could be relevant here? Well, once I create right angles, and if I connect these two together here, I create right triangles. And now a whole universe of things opens up for us. We could possibly use the Pythagorean theorem. We could possibly use um, Sokotoa. We could possibly use, well, with Sokotoa, that's probably about it. We, law of sines, law of cosines, not really relevant when you've got right triangles. Um, what else? I mean, trig. Well, no, we, we got trig already, Sokotoa. Um, yeah, I mean, that's basically it for right triangles in this case. So we're already eliminating and narrowing down the field of what's possible for a question like this. So, well, let's see. We've got, we know this is 2, and we know this is 2 because they're radii. We know that since this is going to be splitting it in half, these are going to be each 25 degrees. And now suddenly we can start filling in information. We know as well angle rules are going to be important, often on questions like this. Angle rules, call it angle rules. So 180 degrees in a triangle, on and on and on. So that's going to be relevant here. So if this is 90, this is 25, and this angle right here would be... Let's see, 90 plus 25 is 115. This would be 65 each. Okay. Uh, well, now what? Well, we want to find AB. So if I put this in here, suddenly I have some information that I didn't have before. I know that this side of the triangle is 2, and I know that this angle is 65. And since this is going to be perpendicular to this we'll call this side CO, this segment CO, uh, we know this is a right triangle, and now I can bring in my Sokotoa. So now I'm going to set up, if I'm looking, I have this angle, I'm looking for this piece, which I'll call X. This angle relates to X and 2 with the trig function of sine, opposite over hypotenuse. So the sine of 65 is going to be equal to X over 2. So X is equal to the 2 sine of 65. Let's pull out the calculator. Okay, so we have 2 times the sine of 65 gets me 1.81, 1.81 something. Uh, but I want the whole side AB, so I'm going to double this so I can get the whole thing, not just one piece of it. And I get 3.63, and that's choice D, and that's the answer. So, hard question like this, a lot of possibilities, at least it seems at first, about how you might solve it. But when you approach a hard question, like a geometry question, you want to think, okay, what really 
could they make me do on a question like this? Not much. The actual rules and things they test in geometry on any of the three tests, math level one or two, ACT or SAT, it's actually quite limited. So in this case, it was Pythagorean theorem, Sokotoa, once we found out that uh, these angles are 90. Angle rules, I and mean, that's about it. What else is there in the limited universe of math rules? Not much. So always think in terms of, okay, what could they possibly ask me about? And let me systematically work through those rules or concepts or formulas and see if they're applicable to a question like this. Fill in your diagram, and then hopefully you get the answer. To learn more about Reason Prep's SAT, SAT subject test, and ACT video courses, go to reasonprep.com enroll, and you can find the link in the description below the video.